warning, warning, explicit content coming your way. If you're watching this by yourself, maybe grab a parent or someone who you trust that is older than you and you can have healthy dialogue because today we're talking about lust. And I'm about to say two other things that we're talking about in five, four, three, two, one, masturbation and pornography. If you don't know what those things are, please go back to the first two videos, watch those first, get a parent involved, bring someone along with you that knows the Bible, that goes to church. But yeah, we're talking about these things. Yeah, we're talking some, about some heavy topics today. But we have two incredible people that joined us in on this conversation. We've got Megan Hayes, our preschool director. And we've got Garrett Burns, our college ministry. He's back. And rec ministry director. He's back. He's, he came back for he another came video. came back. Wow. We thought he was so wise in the first video. Yeah. We wanted him to come back yes. for this video. <laughs> so we had uh, some hard conversations, some good conversation though. Yes. Uh, but please, once again, like, just be aware. Yes. Be aware of what we're about to talk about because we didn't hold back. Nope. We did not hold back on this conversation. Nope. We want to get real with you guys. Yep. So, so without, parents, oh. if you're watching this now, um, take maybe watch it before you watch it with your kids. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, yeah. and you probably, if you're on our email list, you got an email with this video um, to watch beforehand. So, yeah. So, without further ado, let's talk about some answers to today's. Big, Big questions. questions. Scottsdale students, welcome back to Big Questions. Want to just throw out another warning and let you guys know that today's topic is going to um, be a pretty deep discussion um, of, regarding lust, pornography, sex. It's gonna we're gonna talk about relationships, how far is too far, and so I would highly encourage you to watch this with your parents, uh, middle schoolers specifically, high schoolers too. Like watch this with your parents, sit down, enjoy this uh, together, so that you guys can have healthy dialogue in the home. But today we have both Megan and Garrett bringing Garrett. the heat and the truth <laughs> on these topics of. Masturbation, pornography, lust, how far is too far? Yep. And in, specifically in a relationship or outside of a relationship. And uh, so let's get into it. The first question I have is, is pornography, masturbation, and lust a sin? Where do we see lust being a sin in scripture? So whoever wants to take that. Well, I think it's important to note what lust actually is. And um, it can be described as a passionate desire. And when God created us, he designed us to have hearts that had a passionate yep. desire, but with the intention of our desire being towards him. Mm -hmm. And what happened when sin entered the world is that things shifted yeah. and lust is now seen as sexual or um, towards things that are forbidden, yeah, um, according cool. to God. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, that's a good just definition, like a foundation to work from. Uh, to answer the question directly, uh, yes, it is a sin. Um, we are, like you said, supposed to desire God above all things. And um, within that, he has given us a framework uh, for us to desire other things, um, specifically like of a sexual nature. But uh, when we are, we're really talking about these things being outside of, of that framework. Um, so yeah, they're, they're definitely, it is definitely a sin. I think the most clear uh, picture we may see of this, actually there's tons to be quite honest, but one of the most clear ones is in, um, when we talk about like the use of our bodies is in 1 Corinthians chapter six, um, which uh, puts, it, puts it up, uh, juxtaposes it with the gospel and the work that Christ did on the cross in redeeming us to, to redeem is to, to buy back. Mm -hmm. And so he has, he has purchased us, not in part, not like just our minds, but he has purchased us fully, purchased our minds, our hearts, our, our bodies, yeah. um, our souls. And so he, uh, he has, uh, there's a way that we're supposed to live. And, and anytime that we uh, participate in any sexual immorality, so anything of a sexual nature, even if it's just in the mind, that's outside of God's moral design, outside of the framework that he has for his people, then that's sin. And that's yep. not using our bodies the way that we should. Uh, it's, it's at the end of 1 Corinthians 6. Um, it's really 
powerful. Describes our bodies as temples. Yep. And yep. we know what temples are throughout mm -hmm. the Bible. The place um, where God dwells. Yep. And it describes that we don't belong to ourselves and we were bought with a high price, like yeah. you said. So we're called to honor God with our bodies. And when we give in to lust yeah. and passions of the flesh, we're not honoring God ultimately. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I like the way that it just says sexual immorality yeah. because it encompasses, it's not, it doesn't say porn directly, but yep. that is sexually immoral. It doesn't say uh, lusting after uh, another man or another woman, but that is sexual immorality. It just, it covers the whole thing. Yeah. So that there's really not a lot of gray area for us. Yeah. So it's definitely a sin, but uh, you, you have the world telling people and teenagers, it's okay for, it's okay for you to self explore mm -hmm. and for self pleasure. And it's okay to, to touch your body in, in a, in a passionate way that makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we as believers combat that? How do we, how do we, re-navigate the conversation or help people realize like, no, 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 actually that's defiling yourself. Well, in First Thessalonians in chapter four, it talks about how God's will for us is to be holy. And in part of that is controlling our body and walking with holiness and honor. So we're called to actually walk differently. Yeah. We're called to stand out. We're not yep. called to stand in and fit in. Um, so when we read that and we give in to those lustful passions, we're listening to the world. We're no longer listening to God. Yeah. Um, yeah, which exactly. feeds into the fear of man over the fear of God. Mm, um, that's good. And so you guys were in 2 Corinthians 6. If you go down to 7, 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1, because we have these promises, dear friends, the promises of you know, Christ and everything, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit. And let us work hard, or yes, let us work hard to toward complete holiness because we fear God. Let's work hard toward complete holiness. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, there's so many passages in scripture that talk about in the importance of the body. Yeah. And I think, you know, Paul in Paul's day, he was writing to people who the Greeks were, I'm going to separate the body and the spirit. Yep. They're two different things, but we cannot do that. We, we have to honor the body that we've been given. We have to steward it well. Um, mm -hmm. We know that uh, uh, physical, uh, training is somewhat of an importance, but biblical training, spiritual training is more important, um, is up more importance or something like that. I know I'm messing that up somewhere, but, but we know that our body is a temple and it's so important and it's precious to God. Yeah. And I think we're going to end up saying this probably a bunch, uh, over the course of this, this video, but we're like, it's not that these, some of these things are downright bad yeah. uh, in, in every scenario, but like having pleasure, come like from your body yeah. is that's not sinful, mm -hmm. but it has to be the right context. Yeah. Um, so like the world is trying to take it out of the right context. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not bad in its own, in its own right. Yeah. Like for instance, I'm married, like I have sex. Like that's something that we do and it, that glorifies God. Yeah. The way the world presents it as something to do all the time in, in any form or fashion that's not, it doesn't glorify God. Yeah. And, and he doesn't leave us in the dark. Like yep. he, he, he tells us, he gives yeah. us direction. Um, so what we, a, we know how to glorify him. What about masturbation without looking at something? Is that still wrong? There's a lot of Christians that will say, yeah, yeah go ahead. But I, I, I just... Yeah. Where's the, there's we actually tension. had this conversation yeah. in a male and a female perspective. And... Mm -hmm. From a female perspective, regardless of if you are looking at something that is straight in front of you, those thoughts are still in your head, yeah. which is still sinful. Yeah. Um, I don't, I have never heard or read or known of anything where it is possible to masturbate without lust yeah. being involved. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. while there's not a direct scripture that says, do not masturbate, mm -hmm. it is implied because there is always lust involved in masturbation. And yeah. obviously throughout scripture, lust is, is seen as not good yeah. and honoring to the Lord. I would say the same for yeah. men in the sense that there's always lust involved. For men, we might even take it to like a, a, another level in the sense that maybe there's not a physical image present. Maybe we're not watching something or seeing something. 
uh, but there's definitely the imagination. Yeah. And the uh, fantasy. The mm-hmm. fantasy, mm-hmm. and that's still that's still lusting. That's still a, yeah. a desire of something that God has not given you. Yeah. That's not yours. Yep. Um, and so. Uh, the, the, the biggest wrong. question: Would you, would you do it, in front of a crowd? Like, would you actually like, go into a public space and just, I mean, maybe there are some people that do that. I don't know. But like, and just like full on, like, you're not going to do that. You do that behind a closed door or, uh, you know, behind, you know, you do that in secret. And so a lot of things we do in secret, we, we try to hide away. We do these things in darkness. The light will eventually shine on them. And my hope is that no one gets humiliated. Um, by being seen or got, getting caught, mm-hmm. but instead you're humbled by the word of God yeah. and, and instead of humiliated. There's two different things. Um, and it's not like, I don't, if you get caught, praise God, because hopefully you grow from that. But also just read God's word or, or listen to what we're saying today and, and flee from those temptations because you will have that temptation to seek out pornography or seek out to masturbation or all these different things Mm -hmm. that are that there's pleasure involved because our brain our dopamine seeks for that it desires that i mean when you do something enjoyable the dopamine drops and that's like you get this high um but there's other things that are holy that can do that for you as well like worshiping with a bunch of other believers like you're actually dropping dopamine then too which is really great that's why it's kind of addictive I'm going to start using that phrase, just dropping dopamine. Dropping dopamine. I love that. <laughs> a, little, a little ghetto there, ghetto science lesson. <laughs> ghetto science lesson. But it's interesting because that's how the porn industry is able to be so uh, successful, for lack of a better word, the yeah. addictive qualities of it. Yeah. So it feeds into that, which is why it's so difficult for people that expose themselves to it early to stop. Mm. It's an addiction. It's yeah. a form of addiction. They say it's more addictive than the strongest drug cocaine heroin whatever it's 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 so just brutally addictive that it will take control of you and your life and it ruins future marriages and it feels less dangerous right it does. you're not actually like shooting something up yeah you're not yeah taking something in like it's it feels less dangerous and all the while like it's just digging deeper and deeper roots into your heart yep yeah. And that's kind of the next question right there. I mean, you kind of hit into it, but you want to read the next question or do you have? <laughs> well, okay. Well, what I was going to say, I mean, like we really have already kind of hit on this, this next question. The next question was going to be, what is the problem with porn and lust if I'm not doing something physical with another person? But I mean, we've kind of hit on this, that like it, the Bible talks about, um, sexual sin being something that we like we sin against our own bodies that's mm-hmm. the first corinthians yeah. 6 passage mm-hmm. and and i think we've made it pretty clear at this point in the conversation that like it doesn't take you interacting with another person physically for you to like commit sexual sin like porn and lust mm-hmm. is a sexual sin um against your own body um and against your own spirit um and so i feel like we've we've hit on that unless you guys have something more to say on that I was just going to say the root is selfishness. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and, and essentially yeah. in Jeremiah, it talks about the heart being deceitful above all things. So mm-hmm. you just, you have to be really careful um, and you can't just trust, you can't trust your heart initially. Yeah. You, you have to really question and, and decide, is this honoring to the Lord, regardless of if anyone else is involved? Yeah, I would say if we just look at the words of Christ, whenever he's given his like most famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, um, Matthew chapter five, when he calls out, he's calling out different things and he's kind of like raising the bar in certain areas for his followers, for his disciples. Um, and he says like, if you hate in your heart, that's murder. Mm-hmm. Like if you hate in your heart, then that's the sin, that's the sin of murder. Um, and he goes and he starts to talk about the sin of, uh, what's it called when you have sex with another woman, it's not your wife. Adultery. 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 Thank you very much. He talks about the sin of adultery, right? Sexual immorality. But he he brings it, like what you're saying, to the heart. He brings it to the heart. He doesn't say, if you go have sex with another woman, with another physical person, then that's adultery. No. He says, if you lust in your heart, mm-hmm. that is adultery. Like these things, these things are the same. This this is sexual immorality. Mm. Um, so there is no need for any other person, whether in a video, in your, like 
in, in real life, if you are lusting after somebody, that's the sin of adultery. Like it mm -hmm. is wrong according to Christ. Yeah. Um, and he it, died for you. And it goes so. super far and it even says like, I mean, and if your hand, uh, even the, your stronger hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. Mm -hmm. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Yeah. And yes, that's some figurative speeching, speech, but speeching, speech there. But like, yeah, like flee from that, cut that off. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. don't allow that into your life. Like, build accountability, build accountability partners that can help you with that. Like, have your mom or your dad or your grandma or someone in your family check your search history. Don't clear it. Like, set up parameters for these things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and I think we're going to talk about that yeah. in a little bit. When we I know. Yeah, the, I'm, I'm the just so excited. Yeah. 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 No, but it's, it's so important. Like, mm -hmm. we want to get that out there. Yeah, so uh, what, how is, you know, I would say just masturbation or looking at pornography or just, like, anything outside of the parameters of God's design, how does that hurt your future your friend relationships, your um, your relationships with in marriage, mm -hmm. like how does that actually affect your future? Well, I think it it sets this ungodly stand standard for what to expect. I think yeah. that it it paints this image in your mind that it has to be a certain way. On top of the addictive qualities of pornography in general, I think that that can infiltrate all of your future relationships in it a will. negative way. It, it yeah, will it will. Infiltrate. Yeah, um, in a super negative way. And I know from a female perspective, it would create me feeling like I have to measure up to what I've seen, images I've seen, the way women look, the way women are interacting in their relationships, I would, I would almost covet that mm -hmm. um, because I would want to do that as well because they look so happy. They look yeah. like they're enjoying themselves. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah so uh, on the, you spoke a little bit from like the female perspective, yeah. from the male perspective, it creates absolutely ridiculous expectations. Like that is, that is not real life. Yeah. And, and it, it's not just not real life because other women don't do those things. It's not real life because it shouldn't be done. Like that's mm -hmm. not the, that's not the design. Um, so like if, like as a male looking at that, number one, it's, it becomes addictive. So you're not, even, you're not looking at one. And so you have one idea. No, you have hundreds of ideas because you're looking at so many videos and those things are, you're, you're creating an appetite for something that not only like will not be satisfied, but cannot be satisfied. Mm. Like you're creating an, an appetite that you were never supposed to have. Yeah. Um, and so you can't quench that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're, you're setting future relationships up for failure. Mm -hmm. uh, because you're you're going in with expectations uh, that are ungodly and that mm -hmm. are that are wrong, um, and it's not it's not a switch. Like you don't flip the switch. Like oh okay, well I looked at that then, but now like now I'm not going to desire that anymore. Like I just won't desire mm -hmm. it. Like no, it's it's hard work, um, mm -hmm. and it's possible in the power of the Holy Spirit. Because uh, he can do all things, um, and he wants to do that for you eventually, uh, but you're still left with a lot of, um, with a lot of earthly consequences yeah. uh, from from your actions. And I don't know if we mentioned this or not, but if you really love that person that you're going to to be with, you don't want to. You don't want to impose expectations upon them, but you're not going to be able to help it. And you don't want them to feel like they have to live up to a mm -hmm. standard yeah. that they weren't created to live in. Like that's not loving for them. No, mm -hmm. that's not that's that's not you loving the other person. So you're sinning against your body. That's that's one. And then you're not helping the other person. Like yeah. nobody wins. Zero people win in nope. this situation. Nope. Uh, mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's I've, a disaster for future. I was I was exposed to pornographic images in second grade, and wow. was hooked ever since. And it got worse and worse and worse and worse. 
And so my marriage suffers because my, like my, my bed is my wedding bed or whatever. Yeah. My marriage bed is not what it, what God designed it to be because we have to, as a couple, we have to work at that mm -hmm. because there is like you guys were talking about, there's this expectation, but there's also this like another side of it that people don't even think about. I am constantly fighting the battle against lust. I am constantly running yeah. and trying and pursuing holiness to the point where I push my wife away and I, I abstain from sexual activity because I'm so like focused on trying to do well, but my brain can't, yeah. it can't, you can't differentiate. give yourself the way that, that you want to be able to give yourself yeah. away. I've looked at pornography for longer than I've like longer than I've been married. Mm -hmm. And so like I'm fighting these things and these images are ingrained in my brain. Like, yes, the, the God, God can redeem those things and take those things out, but yeah. there are images burnt literally scientifically. These images get burnt into your brain and you just, you have them in the back. It's like old TVs when you turned them off, but you could still see like. <laughs> exactly like that. Exactly. Or when you look at a light for a long time mm. and then you close your eyes and you still see that light. Yeah. Um, that's kind of what it is. And so just like there's two lights to this. And, and so that's something that Marin and I, we work on, we work through. Um, and it's, it's a challenge and nobody ever told me that. Yep, I never heard that. Nobody ever told me. They always said, hey, you're gonna, you're, it's just gonna mess up your sex life and you're gonna have higher expectations. No, to the point where it's messed me up physically and mentally and I have to like strive to have a sex drive that is healthy mm -hmm. um, under the God's, under God's design. But you know, I've been so, I feel like a dirty rag sometimes and I gotta ring myself out, but, um, yeah. but I go back, I go back to, there is hope, I go back to Romans 8. 8, 1, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And that verse just helps me realize like, although I have scarred my brain with so many images, so many videos, just a bunch of filth and garbage and expectation, God can still release me from that. Like Jesus covered that for me. His blood is sufficient for that and for my marriage. Um, and so I just wanna be like completely honest with you guys. like if you are involving um, yourself in masturbation or pornography and you desire to get married one day, cut it off. Like cut it off and, and get rid of it as, as fast as you possibly can. Um, we also are called not to live in a, a repetition of sin mm -hmm. and we're called to repent from those things. And so look out for that because I mean, clearly when we read, um, what was it? Was it Sep? No, it was Matthew. It was about adultery, like cut mm -hmm. off your hand. Like, you yeah. you would rather a or, piece or of your hand be off cut off your, than your whole body gouge out your eye. Yeah, gouge yeah. out your eye, yeah. So yeah. be but radical. I, I think basically. about too, like it affects you tremendously. And I think you said this, but like thinking about your wife too and how she's in a position where she's constantly fighting a battle that she maybe didn't either know that she signed up for or now that y'all are joined together, yeah. she now has to fight that battle with you. Yep. Um, and joyfully as your yeah. wife. And that's really difficult to put someone in that position yeah. to have to do that. Yeah, it's almost not fair. I mean, we praise God for premarital uh, counseling. Yeah, uh, sure. and, and even before that, some of that conversation had already started mm -hmm. uh, just because that's me wanting to be a man yeah. and wanting to like let her know like I'm a flawed human being just like everybody else. But here's, here's a big issue in my life. And uh, I think through that counseling, there was a lot of freedom, but there was a lot of like shedding of tears and shedding of sin. And just like, man, it was a hard season for me yeah. and before I got married and I cried all the time. <laughs> I would literally <laughs> just like, just sit and just cry. Cause I was like, man, I am filthy and I'm dirty. But again, it goes back to the truth of like yeah. his promise. Like I'm seen clean. But worth it because you were fleeing that sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. Worth you were it. Running toward Christ. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think so many people they don't want to go through that hardship. Yeah. They're just like, I'm gonna enjoy the pleasure until you make it to hell, I guess. And then, uh, you know, yeah. like it's yeah. not worth it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so I mean, this is is a good conversation to have because I think that a lot of the students that are going to be 
probably interested in watching this conversation are, are thinking like, yeah, one day marriage, I would like to get married one day. Mm-hmm. And so to kind of have this spoken into their lives of like, hey, if you actually want to protect that marriage, if you like, like our divorce rates in our country are insane and how much of that has is playing into because people set unrealistic expectations yeah. for their spouses because of porn and lust and just the way that our culture is. But like, if you want to beat the statistics, there's a really practical way that you can start by like, take care of yourself, honor yourself, honor your body, um, mm-hmm. pursue holiness in these yeah. ways. Um, so that's a good like thing to have um, in your head, I think, as a teenager. But more so where our teenagers are at are dating relationships mm-hmm. at this point. I'd say <laughs> hopefully not middle schoolers. Middle schoolers, if you're dating. I mean. I get it. Those it hormones be raging. But, oh, Lord. You guys can eat wait. lunch together. You yeah. eat lunch together, and that's so sweet. <laughs> Don't date. I had a girlfriend in sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. I know. And I you know what? Yeah. We started dating. Dating. We, yeah, what's that mean? We what had does the that title. Mean? You don't have a. You don't have an income. You can't. We, date we had the title as girlfriend and boyfriend, <laughs> and at the end of the year, I said, "Peace out. You're not my girlfriend anymore because I won't ever see you in the summer." <laughs> That's just how it works. It's that's so just, realistic. Though. That's yeah. realistic. It's so realistic. Because I could. Unless I couldn't. you live on the same right. street. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. It's not bad to like people. If you're a middle schooler watching this, you can like people. But just wait on the dating thing. But if you are dating, I think a question comes up often of how how far is too far then? Because you want to be able to be like. Phys- like you want to show physical affirmation in a relationship that's a natural i think god given part of relationship and how we function as humans but how far is too far is that even a good question to ask i think it's the wrong question the wrong. to ask yeah uh i think when you're asking that question if you're having to question is this too far it's likely too far i think um it's thinking in regards to how can i keep my heart in a way that's honoring the lord Um, It's putting the Lord in the middle of your relationship with whoever you're with. It's putting, we've said that before, it's putting that other person first. It's thinking, how can I protect the purity of my -hmm. partner Mm -hmm. instead of how far can I push? Because if you're pushing to the point of being too far, you're going to cross that imaginary line that you have made. And personally, I think imaginary lines are dangerous. I think that those imaginary lines end up shifting as you come, as you get more comfortable with the person that you're dating. Yep. You're like, we can handle this. Especially, this is gonna be later talked about, I guess, but especially if you, the two in the relationship, are the only ones who know these imaginary sure. lines that you've drawn. And there's no accountability there's no other accountability. than yourselves, yeah. and you're both it's, sinning together. So, it yeah. It doesn't work. Yeah, yeah I think, <laughs> wrong question, yeah. right? Like, yeah. it's the question that we initially ask, mm-hmm. but it's the question that really, I believe, it's not the spirit asking that question. Mm-hmm. It's our flesh asking that question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because we want to know what we can get away with yeah. mm. when that's not what the scripture tries to steer us toward. Mm-hmm. What the sh- scripture tries to steer us toward is like things, like what Christ says, still in the Sermon on the Mount, next chapter, Matthew 6, Verse 33, he says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Like Mm -hmm. God is not withholding from you a good thing. God's not uh, withholding from you something that you need or something that will bring you a healthy pleasure. Um, So he's he's saying, I will give you all these things that you need. And if you read earlier a little bit, he's saying, I I take care of needs Mm -hmm. and and I know what you need. Your calling is to seek first my kingdom, seek first my righteousness, and then all these things will be added to you. I'm a good father. I give good gifts. Like all these things I will give to you. Seek first my kingdom. Seek first my righteousness. So the better question is not what can I get away with? Mm -hmm. The better question is, does this glorify Christ? Yeah. Does this glorify Christ? Yeah. Uh, like, Like if someone looks at this, will Christ receive glory? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think as we, you talk about protecting like the other person, um, I think in relationships, as far as dating is concerned, you should be able, as a man, if you're dating a woman, whenever, and you, and you break up, when that woman is getting married, you should be able to confidently look the, the, to be husband in the eye and say like, mm. she's pure. Yeah. She's good. Wow. Matter of fact, Matter of fact, she was edified in our relationship. She wow. grew 
I, I did something that was helpful toward your marriage. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that man should be able, like if you're going to marry a woman, you should be able to look at her exes and say, and shake their hand and say, thank you. Wow. And so often <laughs> that's not, that, that's not, yeah. that's not reality, Gosh. but it can be, yes. it could mm -hmm. be if we yeah. just took these things seriously and, and did hard things. Like that's a hard thing mm -hmm. to, yeah. to not, like it is a hard thing, yeah. but it's the right thing. And it's a possible thing in the power of the spirit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, pursue wisdom in the future. Ran. Yeah, yeah no, that like, was good. Yeah, it's so it's so easy. The easier thing out of all of this is to just be physical, no boundaries, do whatever you yeah. want. Like that's the easy thing. Yeah, for the moment. For the moment, yeah. It's it's not the good thing for the, the long run. And it was funny, like even like as an adult, like I've asked this question as I've been in relationships and I remember so distinctly, I went to a friend once, I was in a relationship and I was just like, how like how far is too far in Christian dating relationships? And, and she said the same thing to me, she was like, um, that's that's a bad question because what you're trying to do is you're trying to find the line so you can tiptoe around it. Mm -hmm. it, it in relationships it's not about finding the line it's about chasing after God with everything that you've got mm. and like that has has stuck with me and once again it's one of those things I wish that I would have been told earlier on in my life as I've you know gone through different relationships of like man I wish I knew it was about pursuing Christ, pursuing purity, yeah. um, protecting the Bible says time and time again to like guard our hearts and our minds and Proverbs 423. Um, yeah. Guard your heart. And like, I just like, I don't know. I thought it was like, well, I could go here and no farther. And, and like, it creates more freedom in a relationship when you're chasing after God and chasing after purity, instead of constantly trying to be like, did we cross a line? And then mm -hmm. like having to deal with like the shame and the guilt that accompanies those things. Um, but, but I think there's also practical advice. There is practical advice yes. though, too. And so I because think boundaries are real and they yeah. should be established. Yeah. And so, yeah, having proper bound, you guys have talked about accountability, like don't do relationship alone. I think that there's such a um, misconstrued idea that when you're in a relationship, it's just the two of you <laughs> in a relationship together. And like, you know, you are just going to figure everything out together. And it's like, no, God's design for relationship is that we're always in community. So like set boundaries and then set boundaries in community and have people that are going to help hold you accountable to those things. You're smiling. So you've got something yeah, good to say. I think if we look, <laughs> if we look at the way relationships and marriage relation and becoming marriage relationships have worked out historically, like for the entire human race, like dating is a, is a new phenomenon. Yeah. Hmm. It is. Dating as we know it is less than 120 years old. Mm -hmm. In fact, the word dating uh, is stems from a euphemism that okay. was used for someone who was going to go have sex with a prostitute. Wow. Like, that's where the word, that's like etymology, like, that's yeah. the, where the word is coming from. Wow. So, and that doesn't mean that's what it is now. We're just, sure. I'm just saying that like, historically, people have had Marriages that glorified God didn't just all of a sudden spring up when we started to date. Like there have been God glorifying marriages that people have been joyful in for thousands of years yeah. and dating wasn't necessary. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying we throw away dating. I understand the, cult, the culture and the context we live in, but it does, it does mean that it's, it's not this, there is a way to date in community mm -hmm. where you don't have to silo yourselves off mm -hmm. and yeah. be these two people. And then like, Oh, okay, I'm going to marry you. And then, and then you do life. Like that's not the way it worked for yeah. a long time. And, and God was pleased by that. So I think one of the greatest boundaries you can do or set up is that you, I'm not saying you can't go like have dinner, the two of you, but date in community. Yeah. Um, I think even when we did the panel at, uh, for Scottsdale students, earlier this year, mm -hmm. Larry said, Larry said something that has stuck with me for a long time. He said, um, group dates are free accountability. Mm -hmm. Like it's free. <laughs> like you don't have to do anything extra, just date within a community, go on group dates. And it's a myth to think that you can't, that you can't learn, learn things about people, um, and have even like real conversations yeah. in a, in a community. Yeah. Yeah. You yep. can learn the other person and have real conversations yep. on a group date. Yeah. Yep. You just have to be intentional. Yep. Mm -hmm. I got I got a hot take. Yeah. What's your hot Spit take? It. This is gonna this is gonna really piss some students off. Are you gonna drop off. some dopamine on us right now? I'm gonna drop some some truth on you. Some truth. Um, 
girlfriend and boyfriends don't get marriage privileges. Yeah. So stop FaceTiming all night long to fall asleep. I know that's a thing. Like I know mm -hmm. that you're doing mm -hmm. it. Um, I did it in high school. Like, I didn't have FaceTime then, but I would talk on mm -hmm. the phone, put it on my face and fall say good night. That's stupid. Just don't do it. Like that's, that's a marriage privilege and you're ruining that privilege in your marriage. Like you're, you're wasting that, um, uh, that excitement for something mm -hmm. like that. Cause that is an exciting thing to go to bed together and to wake up with one another. That is a privilege, mm -hmm. um, that is for married couples only. And, um, when you're FaceTiming all night long, you're becoming numb to that beautiful marriage privilege. Yeah. Uh, so that's my hot take of the season. Think about when people get married, right? Yep. What is like the, the person like say as like they've said the vows, they've made the promises in front of the Lord and they say, you may kiss your bride. Like why, why would we say that? It's because historically it should be a novel that was, thing. That was the kiss. Like that yeah. kissing like sealed something like yeah. now it's like, oh, I've kissed, I've kissed her. I've kissed him a yeah. billion times. Like yep. I'll, I'll do it because it's because it's part of the practice now. But that mm -hmm. used to be monumental. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. mm -hmm. That used to be so so meaningful. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that your line needs to be you can never kiss. Maybe it should be, for you. Yeah. I'm just saying like those things used to be so special. Yeah. And they're losing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just yeah. like what you were it's saying. Causing us to be numb to the things numb. that mm -hmm. actually are a yeah. beautiful thing that yep. God has created. And so. Just, just, just please, just for the love of <laughs> marriage and God's design of marriage, stop <laughs> We're pleading with it. you. Very like, against night FaceTime. <laughs> yeah, well, like all night. Like yeah, there, yeah, there's yeah. a degree, but like maybe like nothing good happens past 9.30 or 10 o'clock. Like create that like time frame where you're like, yeah. all right, I'm going to put my phone away and I'm going to charge it downstairs mm -hmm. or I'm going to charge it in the kitchen or in my parents' room so that I'm not tempted mm -hmm. by my phone, which I think a majority of people, mm -hmm. this is the, the, the box of lust. <laughs> the devil's playground, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, and so, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think uh, any time, too, that you sequester yourself, like you said, whoa, or... What a word. Ooh, I, know, I pulled that one out. What does that mean? <laughs> like where you, you essentially are only wanting to be with your with your partner yeah. or yeah, whatever. You like you said, yeah. you're FaceTiming with them. Anytime that you isolate yourselves, mm -hmm. it is a it is a prime opportunity for the enemy to start to weave its way in your relationship. Yep. And it's much easier to give in if you don't have the accountability of other people. Mm -hmm. So it's dangerous to yep. FaceTime all night because it's just easy. Why would you want why would you desire to put yourself in a situation where you're going to have to say no to something that's so hard to say no to? Like that temptation is there. Why would you Yeah. Yeah. Like run away from yeah. that. Yeah. The Bible says flee. Be Joseph. What? I said the Bible says flee. Flee. Like run, like run for your life away yeah. from mm -hmm. these things. And teenagers yeah. like scientifically, like your hormones are raging mm -hmm. harder than any other like <laughs> age group. And that's when we were like, yeah, dating is fine then. Yeah. And, you know, you you <laughs> want to have sex more than any other time. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if that's entirely true because them older folks, I don't know. There's a new statistic coming out, but we don't need to talk about that. We don't. Mm -mm. But, 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 like, <laughs> there's a reality that, like, your hormones are so, like, just in control almost where you have to flee even harder, even more. And so not saying it doesn't get any easier, just saying that like, that's just a scientific fact. Like your, your drive is there. Yeah. So we take a moment I know we've got to move on to these other questions, but I think it is practical and helpful to give students like, what are some like just good boundaries to have? like some practical good, and not for the sake of being legalistic and saying, if you cross any of these boundaries or don't hold up any of these boundaries, you're a dirty, rotten sinner and how dare you. Yeah. But like, what are some things, maybe even in our personal experiences and relationships yeah. that have been like, man, this has been so helpful for protecting me in, in my relationships. I think from a girl perspective, and girls might get mad at me for saying this, but I think what you wear, I think is a huge deal. I think that there's there's a lot of stuff out there in the culture right now that says you do you if boys look at you then that's on them and yes that's that's part of it but i think it i think if you dress in a way that is provocative or revealing 
you are putting people in situations to have to fight sin mm -hmm. when you could honor the Lord and what you wear and making sure you're covered up because you want to continue to be pure and you want to save yourself um, for, you know, your marriage. I think, I think that's huge. And I think um, that's something that's not talked about. And I'm 32. I have seen a change in, in what we wear. When I was a teenager, my jeans went low enough to where it was like scandalous. But now it's, you know, your bellies are out, but your jeans are high. And I'm really glad mom jeans are back because I'm a mom <laughs> and I like to hide everything and keep everything up and, and tucked away. But it's, it's hard. We were talking a minute ago about bathing suits, how mm -hmm. difficult it is to find something that actually covers you up. So I think it's just for girls, I think it's being aware of how we, we can affect other, we can affect males in the way that we dress um, on top of um, books that we read, media that you're watching, that's going to naturally drive how you want to look. So if you're mm -hmm. And reading magazines or watching movies or reading books that are that have graphic content in it, that's going to naturally adjust your thought process on what you think is acceptable and what's not. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. Uh, I would say from some practi practical perspectives, um, group dates are key. But even I would say you don't have to go so big as group dates, although those are great because you don't want to isolate yourself from community because um, you still want to remain in community, but public dates. So like, it's okay to go to, the rest, go to a restaurant, just the two of you, that's in public. Um, it's not isolating yourself. So never be behind a closed door mm -hmm. with just the two of you. Um, like as you get older maybe and you have roommates, um, they're, not, they're not allowed over to your house if nobody else is home. Um, because it's free accountability, like mm -hmm. get, get free accountability. Um, and then I would say even, uh, stop the, stop the, the sins that you can stop. I don't really know exactly how I'm saying this, but like for me, um, porn was a big deal. We actually, uh, Tucker and I, like our friendship kind of like exploded in a good way, launched, if you will, when we finally decided um, that, you know, that we were kind of fed up with it and we just like confessed sins to one another around the topic of, of lust and, and pornography. Um, and so the Bible says that we are to cut out the eye, cut off the hand. Basically, like it doesn't matter what it takes, do what it takes to stop mm -hmm. these things. And those sorts of things um, build an appetite for, for sexual immorality that mm -hmm. you're going to probably want to eventually express with a, a girlfriend or uh, a boyfriend. And so like put like porn blockers on your phone. Like I'm, I'm a married man and I have a porn blocker on my phone because why not? Like, it's no harm. Mm -hmm. I can look at everything I need to look at with the porn blocker on my phone and my wife gets an email every week with my search history. And that's a good thing. It's just a good yep. guardrail. Like mm -hmm. yep. it's, there's, I'm not losing out on anything because I have that. Um, it's, it's wonderful. And yeah. that gives her a lot of confidence and security yep. in the relationship. Um, so just, it seems so simple. Don't be alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. don't, don't be alone with one another. Um, mm -hmm. I got some stuff for the guys. The little one is like car rides. That's yeah. kind of tough. Car rides, because uh, you're probably alone if you're going out on a date uh, yeah. or taking her home or taking him home. Um, but I don't know if you got stuff. Yeah, that yeah I, I think just so that we, we're not just pressing into the ladies, because sometimes this conversation is like, let's press hard into ladies. You got to do this. You got to do this. Um, but fellas, like... <laughs> you're held accountable, man. Like be a man and yeah. you treat everyone around you, female or not, like as if they were precious. Um, and recognize like they're your, they're your sister in Christ. Like they're, women are made in the image of God, just like you are. And, and there's something precious about them. And, you know, you, you take great care of the people around you and the women that you 
like and the the females that you want to start a relationship with i love what garrett said he said you know you should edify them and you should almost leave them better in a better stance with god than than you you found them mm -hmm. and so that means that like you're pursuing a relationship of of lifelong marriage you're pursuing a relationship that says i'm going to put you first and i'm going to lay down my desires that we all have as men that we want we just have this drive like i'm going to treat you like an item and you're going to be used like an item and i'm going to get what i need out of you and after i get my dessert and my cake and eat it too you're gone like that's not how we treat women that is not how men treat women we love and respect them well we care for them as if they're precious to us as if they're a gem and um we we hold them to a high standard even though there are some women out there that don't hold themselves to a high standard man it is our job to put some self-esteem in them or self-worth and let them know that uh, self-worth is a better word let them know that they're made in the image of god and that they are loved by god and that's where they get their affirmation from and mm -hmm. so also if you're in a dating relationship and you're in your guy or you want to be a man you don't want to be a boy have a great relationship with her dad talk to her dad spend time with her dad ask her dad to go to dinner and and say hey here is my expectations of the relationship what do you think of this because this is your daughter who you love and like if there was a guy that came to me like and wanted to date my daughter and he did that i would just be like thank you so much <laughs> like i would be so glad that that guy would say hey my relationship with you as the dad is just as important as my relationship with your daughter because i know what you're trying to do for your daughter and i want to do the same thing yeah. be a be a leader lead initiate those conversations um like women if if the man is not initiating it in a dating relationship maybe think about not dating him actually <laughs> to be quite honest he likely yeah. won't initiate it there. in the marriage um yeah but if but maybe you should initiate those conversations, I guess. But um, men need to, to lead. And part of leadership is the removal of uncertainty and the removal of confusion. Mm -hmm. And so, like, state, state what your boundaries are. State what your desires are. Um, lead that conversation so that she knows she can trust you um, and that you care, and that you're guarding her heart as well as guarding your own heart. Yeah. But, I have two things. Two, two practical things that are going to sound abrasive, but we already warned them in the beginning of the video. Yep. So I'm, I'm going to go for it. <laughs> okay, perfect. Here we go. I will preface this with saying, I think it's okay to kiss in a relationship. I like, that's great. Have, you know, have fun. But um, keep your clothes on for the love of God. <laughs> like, keep your clothes on. Yeah. Girls do not let guys like put their hands underneath your shirt or like the, the clothes stay on and the hands stay <laughs> above the clothes. So yeah. that is just yes. a good when rule. When you kiss hands behind back, lean forward. <laughs> no, don't, don't kiss people That's like okay. that. Okay. That's okay. I, I mean, I'm if okay you with want that. to, if you want to, but it's kind of weird. If, if, um, if that is as far as you can go without sinning, I, then do it. Great. Yeah. If you cannot keep your hands in an appropriate spot, in a respectful spot, then <laughs> tie them behind your back. Watch out for the couch. What do you mean? When you kiss. Oh, you're just saying the couch I think, I think any time that you're kissing and you're horizontal, yeah, uh -huh. that's dangerous. Yes, it's really dangerous. Standing. Yeah, um, and then the other one, um, which is going to sound more abrasive than the one I just said, is boobs are off limits, people. I don't know which camera I'm looking at, but stop it, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, you didn't know if that was that was coming, did you? No, that's like, fine. That is a that's a marriage privilege. That is a marriage privilege. So, mm -hmm. guys, I know. Minimize I know. skin contact. Skin is sexy. Yeah. That's the whole, that's yeah. part of the clothing mm -hmm. thing that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Like skin is, is, is sexy. Mm -hmm. And so minimize that contact. Yeah, absolutely. This is, this is good contact right here. Um, we are quickly running out of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to try to get one more. Yeah. One more question okay. in for you guys. Why do you think people keep this, these sins, uh, I'm going to encompass in these sins in the dark for such a long time? And then how can you bring these sins or lusts? Um, how, can, how can you get help with these things? And how has help helped you? That was a lot. 
I'm sorry. You Layers. got that? You want to tackle first? Yeah, I can start. So uh, sin relies on disguise. So sin like festers in wow. the dark. I think of it like if anything's kept in the dark, it's going to continue to grow out for some reason. The only image I can think of is like black mold. Like How like if it's in, mold, yeah. yeah, if it's hidden Fungus. behind a dark like surface, it's going to continue to grow. But then when the light comes on it, it dries it out. Right. Yeah. So like That's that so to me is how sin is. And if it's hidden, it's easier for me to digest. But at the same time, it's likely to grow and expand and get worse. So yeah. I think um, one of the reasons that people keep it in the dark, and we've talked about this, is they're embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Whether they think they're the only ones dealing with it, which you have learned, yeah, you're not. not. Um, <laughs> or um, I think we care so much about what people think about us. Yep. And we, we have so much fear of man. Um, wow. And as a teenager, I struggled with fear of man. Um, after my parents got divorced, I went down a really dark, dark path. Um, I struggled with sexual promiscuity and I still, I still deal with, like you said, I think you called it worldly consequences. Mm -hmm. You were, I still struggle with that today and reflecting back on how dark my teenage years were and how many years I feel like I wasted mm -hmm. not walking with the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because I kept it dark. I kept it very dark. My parents were divorced and it was very easy for me to hide and keep those things to myself. Um, I did not have a healthy church family where I felt like I could go to anyone. Yeah. So I didn't have any sort of accountability. So that's kind of where I'm landing. I want to read some scripture so that you know. So when we talk about this embarrassing thing mm -hmm. and people feeling like they're alone. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you but what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, he will provide the way of escape so that you will be able to endure it. We are not alone in these fights. Like that, That's why the scripture speaks toward it. Because he know, they know, God knows it's real in our lives. And we're not alone. You do not need to be embarrassed because you think you're the only one who's struggling with this. Um, you are not, and likely you're, unfortunately, but likely you're probably the majority. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of us are, are struggling with these things. Um, it's the way the culture throws it in our face every single place we look and where we turn. Um, and we have to fight that, but God is faithful mm -hmm. and he will provide you a way of escape. Sometimes that means you need to call a friend and just say, bro or sister, I just need to talk right now get my mind on something else. Run out of your house, go for a walk, walk your dog, whatever, whatever these, these things, these things are, open up your Bible and start reading it. Like you have to fight the temptation and you are able to in the power of the spirit. And when you fail, there are people who understand and will come alongside of you to pray for you and to fight for you. James 5, 16 says that we are to confess our sins to one another so mm -hmm. that we can be healed yep. through the power of prayer. And come that on. prayer is powerful. These aren't like, this isn't like low, like wisdom or, or general advice. This is the power of God's word telling us exactly what to do, yep. that you can endure it, that God is faithful. He's on your side. You're not alone in the struggles and prayer heals yep. legitimately. Um, it may take time, but it does what it says it's going to do. Um, so as far as, yeah. I don't even remember the question. <laughs> but like, it was like four questions. You were one. on one. It's yeah. good. Yeah, answer. Cool. I mean, yeah. yeah, when you seek help, it does help. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it, the light, what, that's what, the, yeah. bring it into, bring the, it light. into yeah. the light. And our pride is what's keeping us from this. And what's really blessed my heart is that so many of you guys have been asking about this topic because you want to know the truth and you want the truth to set you free mm -hmm. from these things. And you're probably dealing with these sins. And so I want to just take time to pray over you. Um, I'm going to ask Steph to, to pray over you, if that's okay. With, if, if All you, right. Yeah. Put me in coach. Put, putting you in. And yeah, I just, funny. I just want to thank you again for, for, uh, watching this video all the way through. I know there's probably some cringy stuff in there, but it's important to talk about these things, uh, as you're in middle school or as you're in high schooler. Um, cause like, I told you guys earlier, I was exposed to these things in second grade. So 
yeah. Culture is only demanding these mm-hmm. things more and more. So. The world's coming for us, mm-hmm. but our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Let's pray. Amen. All right, let's pray. God, we thank you so much um, for this group of people, for this church um, that is willing to talk about these topics, is willing to dive in, and is willing to do it through a lens of what your scripture has to say, God. Um, I know that uh, lust uh, and and porn and masturbation, all these things are struggles. Like they are genuine struggles as much as I hate to say it. They're struggles for our middle school students, for our high school students. Mm-hmm. Um, and God, I, I pray that for the student who's watching this right now who just feels stuck. Like they just feel like they like they don't know that they're embarrassed by what they do and they know that it's going to cause harm to them and maybe their future relationships and they just don't know where to go. God, I pray that you would give them the courage and the strength to take the first step to just tell someone mm. that you would give them the courage and the strength to help them step into the light so they can start doing. Yes, it's hard work, but start doing the hard work mm-hmm. of, of just asking um repenting God and asking for forgiveness and moving forward so they can continue to protect themselves, continue to um, protect their future relationships. Um, God, I pray for the, the men who are listening to this message, God, that you would continue to teach them what it actually means to be yeah, a man of God, That's right. that you would teach them how to lead, that you would teach them how to sacrifice um, mm-hmm. things that might feel good in the moment, but sacrifice so that they can be the leaders that you're calling them to be. Mm-hmm. Um, God, I pray for the women who are listening to this video that they would understand that their worth far surpasses mm. um, dressing in a certain mm-hmm. way, that it far surpasses trying to get some kind of sense of self-worth or affirmation from um, allowing men to do things to them um, that shouldn't be done. God, I just pray that they would realize that they're they're your daughters, yeah. um, God, and, and that you um, put great value and great worth on, on their lives. And I just pray that all of the students, all the people watching, watching this video um, would just understand that, that we are your children, God. Mm. And because of that, um, you, you give us good rules and good principles that are, yes, countercultural, but they're because you want us to be protected. That's right. You want the best for us, God. You want the best for our relationships. You want the best for our marriages. You want the best for our hearts. And so, God, I pray that we would learn today to just trust you and Mm. trust that your heart for us is good. Mm. And actually, your heart for us is is the best. You care so much more for us than we care about ourselves. God, I pray this all in your holy and your beautiful name. Amen. Amen. Amen.